Hey guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thanks so much for joining me on episode 44. Today we have a ton of, for me, a ton of finished projects, a few whips, and a very talkative stomach. <laughs> I have not had breakfast yet. It's after 11 o'clock. I've had two cups of coffee, as usual. I had a fantastic day yesterday. Today is October 2nd, Saturday, and I've got a lot of stuff going on that I'd like to share with you. So I hope you will stick with me and enjoy the shenanigans because it's a little wild and crazy. I just spent an hour and a half filming this episode and decided that I wanted to do it again. So here we are, take two. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I appreciate you coming, checking me out, hanging out with me, whatever you want to call it. I hope you find something here that you can vibe with. And if not, I understand and it's okay. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so happy to see you again. Um, I hope you enjoy. This is going to be a little wild and crazy and hectic and rambling. Because I just spent an hour and a half rambling to the camera. So we're going to try this again and we're going to ramble some more. <laughs> so let's hop into what I did in October, what I plan to do in November, which will probably be stuff that I'll be doing in December instead. And we'll talk a little bit about mental health because that's a big topic for October. Not just because October is a mental health month, but because I am struggling with my mental health and trying to recover from too much stress and feeling like my brain was fracturing. So we're better, obviously, or I wouldn't be here. But because of that, November may be a slim month video wise. That's okay. That's okay. We're here and we're doing okay. And I will share some of the things I'm doing to help manage my stress levels, my anxiety, and prevent bouts of depression because those are no fun. Ugh. I'm, I used to live in constant depression, like a constant state of depression. It was so bad. I literally never got a break from it for like 15 years. But I am now where depression is rare. It still hits hard, but it is rare. So struggle's real. I understand it. I am learning to read my body, to understand my limits, and work around them. So, I have a lot of stuff that I've made this month. Now, if you remember from last month, I was working on my super secret Christmas project, and I held it up and showed it to you. I think that was last month. I showed it to you in black and white, I think. And I had it bundled in my hand, so you couldn't really tell what it was. Well, I completely ran out of yarn. Did I tell you that in the last episode? I don't remember. I haven't gone back and watched it. So I've been working on spinning that up, but I had another spin I had to do first. And we'll just jump in and show you that one. So I have dyed up some beautiful BFL in I Love Children colorway, which I showed you last month. This is how the yarn turned out. It is fractal spun. I have a whole video on how I spun this as a fractal. And do you know, one of my Kofi supporters actually called me because we have phone number. I share my phone number with her. We talk all the time. I call her sometimes every day. <laughs> She's a great friend. She called me the day my video came out and said, you would not believe that I got this fiber because this was her month, first monthly subscription. She said, when I saw it, I thought, I want to do a fractal, but I don't know how. And I think this needs to be a hat. And in my fractal video, I, I explained how to do a fractal, showed how I break up the fibers for that, and talked about making a hat. So she had to tell me that that was exactly what she wanted to do. We're like sharing a brainwave here or something. So... She has started spinning hers as a fractal, and I have already spun mine, but I haven't knit the hat because 
I wasn't sure if I wanted to knit it or crochet it. I wasn't sure what the style was supposed to be, only that this is going to be a hat. That's going to lead into some of the FOs, half of the FOs for this month. Here is my Hocus Pocus colorway. It is amazing. It looks nothing like the dye fiber. It looks a million times better. It is 100% fall. It does not speak Halloween to me. It just speaks fall and it's gorgeous. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I'm so happy with it. Um, it's always fun to dye the fiber and have these beautiful colors. But then when you get to spin your own colorway and have it turn out something drastically different, it's really amazing. And I kind of want to spin the rest of it up as fractals and make a sweater. Mm, they're still in the shop. Snatch them up before I decide to take them out of the shop and add another project to my queue that I don't need. Please, please buy it from me so that I don't spin it because I am spinning for the Super Secret Christmas Project, which has a deadline coming up in a few weeks. Like, I really wanted it to be done before Thanksgiving so I could wear it the entire month of December. Yeah, it might be done in time for Christmas. It might not be. Because I'm not quite halfway done with the spin. I have 12 ounces, spinning it to two bobbins, spinning it thicker than it was originally spun because that was a very, very fine lace weight yarn, two ply, and I was holding it double. Well, I was holding it with mohair, and now I'm going to hold it double for the rest of the project. And I thought, why go through all that trouble to make it ultra fine? It takes forever. It's a lot of work. I'm not in the mood for that type of spinning right now. I need it to be twice as thick. Why not just spin it twice as thick? So I'm spinning the singles the thickness of the plied yarn that I have already, <coughs> excuse me, that I've already used. So I am going to um, spin it thicker and hold it single. And we'll go from there. So I have the first six ounces mostly spun. I will hopefully get that finished today. I've got the wheel out, set it up, and then I came back here to film. So I haven't done any spinning yet today. Um, and then I have the other six ounces ready to go on another bobbin and then I will apply them together. We will see how well that goes, how long it takes, because I have not been in the mood to spin, but that is my big whip that is hanging out on my spinning wheel in the living room. I have been working on the super secret Christmas project and Christmas gifts, socks, um, kind of back and forth at the same time, if you will. And since I can't work on the Christmas project, I've just been, I was like, I can get all the Christmas socks done. No, no. I decided to knit on the blanket that I haven't touched since April because it was getting cold and the blanket was too short to really work well. So I pulled it up high enough to be warm up here and my back not be freezing, my feet froze. If I had it covering my feet, it wasn't up high enough on the rest of me and, you know, it just wasn't quite long enough. I was in the middle of row 14. I picked it up October 10th and then on October 12th, I decided to start filming a vlog about knitting this blanket. So I vlogged an entire row, row 15, got that finished. It is one of my most popular recent videos. So if you haven't seen it, please go watch it. It was so much fun. I went to the park with it and I got leaves and sticks and dirt and all sorts of things all over it. I lost a bunch of stitch markers that I had just hanging on it for no apparent reason. And that upset me not because I lost stitch markers. I have a gazillion, but because they're like little safety pins and I didn't want any child to get, get impaled in the bottom of their foot by one. I don't know where they are. We looked and looked and looked. Everywhere I took the blanket, we looked. We didn't find them. They're gone. So, I hope a barefoot child does not find them in the bottom of their foot. Where was I? I told you this was going to be a rambling one. So, we will start with my first FO of the month, which was not the yarn. That was like third 
yeah, that was my third FO. If you're, if you're going in the order of when I started the project, okay, if you're going in the order, I wrote them down. Okay. I made a pair of socks for my man for Christmas. He has seen them. He watched me knit them. I've told them they were his Christmas gift this year. He knows, okay? I don't care if he watches this. I don't think he watches my channel, but if he does, it's fine. These are his socks for Christmas. They are my Slytherin colorways. Now, I went through a phase of dyeing yarn and I tried my hand at self-stripings. Well, I didn't have any of the tools I needed to make a self-striping yarn easily. So I hate self-striping yarns, but I kind of like this one. Like I like knitting it up. I like the way it looks. This is green and silver Slytherin colors. And then I used the solid gray Slytherin color for, why do we say heel, cuff, and toe? It's toe, heel, and cuff or cuff, heel, and toe. But that just doesn't flow. Anyway, his socks were cast on October 1st and I bound off on the 18th. So I actually started another pair first, knit to the heel flap on the first sock and set it aside and knit these. So I don't like doing heel flaps. So I knit a whole pair of socks, heel flaps included, because I didn't want to do a heel flap. Tell me how that makes sense. Anyway, I always knit my socks on US zero and one needles. And that is 2.25 millimeter and 2.5 millimeter needles. I know because I just looked at it for the previous version of this vlog episode that I already filmed that you don't get to see. I knit these on 72 stitches. My gauge is approximately eight stitches per inch. These will fit my man. They didn't take long to make. I am planning to film a how can I knit a sock in a day vlog at some point, but I keep forgetting I'm going to do that and I cast on a sock or I don't have a whole day to knit. So I'm kind of waiting on schedules to settle into routine so I know how much time I have and then I have to be in the mood for it and I have to be in the mood for filming because I'm always in the mood to knit, almost always. But I have to be in the mood for filming and I just sit and watch videos and knit for hours. I can knit a sock in a day. I've done it where I had the cuff done and knit the rest of the sock and knit the cuff on the second sock all in one day. So I know I can do it. The problem is getting all of that lined up in one day, getting it vlogged and all of that. That takes longer, by the way. When you're vlogging something, it takes twice as long or three times as long. That's okay. So, first FO of the month, Christmas socks. Second FO of the month, Christmas socks. These are my bonfire colorway and I think I called it dark brown. I'm not good at naming stuff, or I didn't used to be. My problem with this colorway is that it started off really vibrant and then it faded. And that's how the yarn dyed and it's true on every single skein and i dyed like four skeins of the same color i don't know why it did that at least it's consistent across the skeins but i'm not happy with it and so i have to knit it up i i have to knit this color way up because i cannot sell it because it's inconsistent in depth of color you know depth of tone whatever vibrancy but you know I, I I'm not feeling the pain you know it's beautiful yarn <laughs> I get to knit it all <laughs> second pair of socks done I also used 72 stitches because these are for a man and used the same size needles 2.25 millimeter us zero and 2.5 millimeter which is us one the smaller needles are just for the ribbing on the cuff. That's it. I cast these on August 30th. And obviously by the end of the day, I was ready to start the heel flap and was like, nope. Because I cast on the other ones October 1st, like two days later. So these were finished October 30th, the other day. 
what I did was when I picked these back up, instead of finishing the first sock, I just started the second one. And I knit to the same point. And then I knit the heel flaps for both. So I get those out of the way. And then I finished the foot all the way to the toe. I was ready to kitchener and I just left the needles in there. Set it aside. Knit the other one all the way to the same point. Kitchenered one, kitchenered the other, wove in all the ends, and they were done. When I picked this up, it took like three days to finish the pair. Okay, maybe a week. It didn't take long. I just needed needed to finish these because the brain said, we want to work on this. My brain's been weird this month. My brain has been really weird this month. So because I wanted to make a hat out of this yarn, but I didn't know what type of hat, I decided to experiment. I tried crocheting. I pulled some yarn out of my blanket stash and I tried to crochet it. That didn't work. I tried three different styles of crochet, single crochet, double crochet, half doubles, nothing worked. I've crocheted a lot of hats. I usually like them, but nothing was working. So I decided to try knitting a hat top down. So I did. I cast on 12 stitches using Judy's Magic Cast On. So I had six on one needle, six on the other. I knit one round on DPNs. I use US four needles, which is 3.5 millimeter. And then I began the increases every row for a while. And then it was every other row. And I don't remember how else I did it. Um, and when I thought it might be big enough, then I just knit straight forever. Like it needed to have the right look to it and then I started I went down needle size and I started knitting the ribbing that is not my stomach that's got to be kids outside that's kids outside being Tarzan god I thought it was my stomach it scared me my stomach's not that loud or that talented okay so when I was done when I was ready to cast off I sewed the bind off edge, the live stitches, to the top of the ribbon and made a fold of him. And that was beautiful. It was really well done. And then I put it on. So I, that is huge. I can have my hair in a bun and the hat still fits. Mm-hmm. It's huge. It's humongous. It looks perfect on my man as a slouchy hat for him. And he's got a really big head. I mean, he's a man. I have a child size head. So, you know. Hi. Yeah. I could totally fold up the brim again. And it's still a little slouchy. There we go. It looks awful. It's still big. But everybody in the house loves it, including me. And if I decide to put my hair in a bun, I can still wear a hat. So, hat number one done. Love it. Not what I want for this yarn. So, I needed to do another experiment. But before we get there, I cast this on October 21. And bound off October 23rd. Woven the ends and everything. Three days. Two, one, two, three, four, yeah, three days. I love the yarn. And I still have some left for the blanket. I'm enough to do one more square on the blanket with it. I love the little black specks and blue specks. The fiber was mostly white. But there's gray and blue and little bits of black in here. So it's really pretty. My man says, I want one just like this, but in darker yarn. And I'm like, but this looks good on your dark, gorgeous skin. He's like, no, I need darker hat. Oh, fine. Fine. Be that way. I'll be making him a hat with different yarn at some point. So... Then, while I was supposed to be working on the advent calendar, but had a back injury, so I couldn't, 
I cast on another hat immediately. So that was on the 24th, I cast on a new hat, I think. Yes, the 24th. This time I cast on, at the bottom, a much smaller needles with much thinner yarn. It was US 3 needles, which is 3.25 millimeter. So not that much smaller. I cast on regular long tail, nice and loose, so it would be stretchy. I knit however long that that section is, did a purl round, knit that much again, and then folded it and knit it together with the cast on edge and then kept going. And I was around here when I put it down and this was supposed to be a whip today, but we'll get back to that in a moment. So I'll show it to you. It fits really well. This is it. If I just barely stick it on my head or you know, it's a little loosey goosey. It is perfect around the head. Um, I don't think I could wear it over a bun, but if my hair was braided, it'd be fine. It's a little long, as you can see, so I could technically fold it up, give it a little brim, just cute like that. I love the yarn. This is some of my hand spun. I don't remember what breed I dyed it. It was comb top that I dyed and spun up a sample. I had it in my shop for a while. It's gone now, of course, naturally. It's all gone. This was years ago. Um, it's a thin fabric. I should have knit this on a size smaller needles, but I thought maybe having it a little less dense would be nice on the not quite as cold days. My ears are the only thing that gets cold, not my head. So, I mean, Georgia rarely gets below 30 degrees in the daytime. So this part of Georgia where I'm at. So yeah, um, at night it gets really cold. So you can get down in the teens. I can't remember the last time I got down to zero in Georgia because I don't think that's ever happened since I moved here when I was 10. But I could be wrong. I mean, I wasn't paying attention when I was a kid and I was fresh from Montana. So the Georgia winters were pathetic. Pathetic to my Rocky Mountain high elevation, six months of snow, six foot of snow being normal winters to come here and have the whole country shut down for uh, flurries, which everybody called blizzard. Like I've been in blizzards, ground blizzards and actual blizzards. For those of you who don't know what a ground blizzard is, that's where you have very, very dry snow on the ground and the wind picks it up, throws it around in the air and you literally cannot see where you're going. It's kind of like a sandstorm that's made of snow. And it's the type of snow you cannot make snowballs out of because it's so dry. So when I was a kid, I was more like, really, you call this cold? You call this winter? We're used to negative 60 degrees and we're used to six foot of snow and we're used to snow for six months of the year. Yeah. This is not winter. This is nothing. But now that I've been in Georgia since then, you know, over 30 years, I mean, when it gets cold, it's painful. When there's snow on the ground, it's miserable. I just want it gone. So I um, kind of transitioned. It took 30 years, but I've transitioned. So anyway, moving on. This was finished October 31st. See, I, I wasn't going to have it finished for this vlog because I was going to film the 31st. Didn't fill up to filming, so I finished this, the hat instead. Not a big deal. Okay. Moving on. On the 26th, um, I went to bed my usual 9 o'clock around. Couldn't sleep. So I was laying, I was actually dozing off and on for a while. 1130 comes along and my brain goes, Hey, why don't we try knitting gloves for the family for Christmas? Wide awake. Gee, thanks brain. No, I can't sleep. So I got up and I thought, what yarn do I have in my stash? that I don't have to wind into a ball in order to knit. And I remembered I have some leftover Drops Lima from a sweater I knit years ago in purple. I was like, well, I don't really want purple gloves, but let's use up some of this yarn. So I did. And 
Lima is a wool and alpaca blend, which I don't care for. I find alpaca to be scratchy. I don't like it. Wool is not, but alpaca is. I'm not an alpaca person, okay? I have felt some really silky, lovely, soft alpaca. I've worked with some. But the majority of the time that there is alpaca mixed in with wool, I do not like it. I don't like spinning it. I don't like knitting it. But I'm trying to get over that and embrace alpaca because it is very warm and it's very nice. And this yarn is perfect for gloves. So I used US 3 needles, which I believe is, yes, it's 3.25 millimeter. I had it written down somewhere. So I made a pair of gloves. Actually, that night, I made a glove minus two or three fingers and thumb. Because you knit the hand, you knit the pinky, you knit the ring finger, then the middle finger, then the first finger, and you finish with the thumb. So I knit the first one about two-thirds of the way. And by then, it was around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. So, and I couldn't see straight to read the pattern, and I couldn't follow it. So I went to bed. And the next day, I finished the first glove. When did I finish the second glove? Finished on the 29th. So it took me about three days to finish. God, stomach hush. Um, so as I finished off the second glove... I dug around in my room to see if I could find the conductive thread that I had purchased years ago from Knit Picks, and it came in a little sewing machine bobbin, and it came with a couple of darning needles, and I had just stuck it somewhere. Well, I found it very quickly. It was right where I thought it was. Amazing. That's rare. If you know anything about me, you know that's extremely rare. So I duplicate stitched on the index finger of each glove with the conductive thread and it works. I can operate my phone. So happy. So I have, I didn't do the thumbs. I just did the first finger. I was like, that's easier for me because I use my first finger more than I do my thumb when operating the phone. I use my thumb to get into my phone, use the thumbprint, but I can't do that with gloves on regardless. So I'll just put in my password, which I do with my finger, not my thumb. I text with my finger more than my thumb and it's really hard to text in gloves regardless. So I think I can get by with it. And if I decide to add conductive thread to the thumbs, I will, it's no big deal. I have more and I can order more. So I have a pair of gloves. And I decided I wanted to knit gloves for the whole family. They all got to try on the gloves. I made notes of what to do different. My man didn't try them on because his hands are twice the size of mine. So I didn't try my little teeny weeny gloves on his hands. But I measured his hands so I can knit him gloves based off of my gauge. And the pattern that I purchased does not go up. I mean, this is the next to largest size. I have small hands. I'm not going up a needle size. I like the gauge. I like the fabric. So um, I will make up my own pattern based off of these. I've done it before when the kids were little and I couldn't find glove patterns for children. I think I used a mittens pattern and turned it into gloves. So I'm perfectly capable of doing this. It won't take a lot. Gloves are super easy once you understand them. And where was I? My stomach rumbled again and distracted me. I'm really hungry. It's like almost 12 and I have not had breakfast yet. But let me rephrase that. It's almost noon. <laughs> it's okay. My stomach can wait, but it can't wait a whole lot longer. So anyway, I've ordered three other colors of Drops Lima. And when I originally ordered this yarn, I ordered it from the wool warehouse in the UK. And for the life of me, I could not remember for the past few months, a few weeks, I don't know how long it's been. I've been trying to remember where I ordered my yarn from in the UK because it's like the cheapest place to find drops yarn. And that's where I wanted to get it from. And I couldn't remember for the life of me. It's not Hobie, it's not Lind Hobie, it's whatever those other ones are. It was like, it was a place in the UK. So whenever I was knitting these, it popped into my head wool warehouse. So I, that's where it was. 
So I ordered yarn. I have no idea how long it will take to get here because it's coming from the UK. But I ordered three different colors and because I wasn't sure which yarn I wanted for which person, I ordered three skeins of each so that I would have enough yarn for my man's ginormous gloves. I wouldn't have to worry about running out. I only need one and a half skeins for me and for each of my boys. But for him, I wasn't sure how much yarn I needed. I wasn't sure if two skeins would be enough. So I just ordered three of each color, which means I will have more yarn for something else later. So I ordered, I think, a dark blue, a dark green, and a dark gray, I think, or medium gray. Anyway, I'm excited. I can't wait for them to get here. Yes, stomach, we know. Um, so we are, I am waiting with great anticipation for that yarn to get here so I can knit the gloves that I'm just dying to knit. My brain literally will not stop thinking about gloves right now. It's really weird. They're addictive. If you've never knit gloves before, once you start, they're as addictive as socks. The fingers, for some reason, I am loving knitting on DPNs, especially US 3. It's what, 3.25 millimeter? Anyway, perfect size for me. I'm loving them. I'm, I want to knit all the fingers. Weird. I know. Weird. Anyway, so I'm waiting with great interest anticipation for those yarns to arrive if they don't get here before I want to knit to have the gloves knit by if they don't get here till after Christmas or too close to Christmas to get these done it's okay no big deal it is what it is I knew it was a risk when I ordered the yarn it doesn't matter I have enough going on right now I need to finish spinning that yarn so I can finish knitting the project I need to finish the gift knits, which I'm on the last pair of socks, but I have to rip out a pair because they're, they were knit on 64 stitches and that's too big around. They need to be knit on 60 stitches, which is what size I should be knitting for me because all the socks I knit for me are too big around, but they fit my 16 year old son. And so four of those pairs went to him. The other ones I'm going to wear, even though they're loose. <laughs> so the scrappy sock yarns are great and fantastic my son is enjoying them he asked me can these go in the dirty clothes I said yeah but you can wear them two or three days before you pop them in the dirty clothes because wool does not absorb body odor I cast on another hat on October 29th and I cast off on October 30th. So while this one was sitting in timeout because I got bored with it, I cast on my first bucket hat. I did this on US 10, which is six millimeter needles. And I just pulled some random bulky yarn out of my stash. Hand spun, it's beautiful, but it is not me at all. It, I don't like it, it just doesn't speak to me. It's got too much green and red in it, I guess. It's just weird. It's fine, it's just weird. It's very, very warm. It's very, very wooly. I love it. I cast on six stitches and I knit in the round. And when I was done with the hat, I closed up the hole. So this was not a magic cast on. It was just long tail cast on six stitches or eight stitches. However many I started with, divide it onto three needles and go. And when I got to the length I thought was good, I did a purl row. I don't know why I just did should have done that when I finished the increases that would have made a nice little line that would have been really pretty um and then I did some increases did a few rows did some more increases and did a few rows and cast off I have a bucket hat what do you think what do you think of my bucket hat it's not gonna stay on like it my hair needs to be braided or something so that it doesn't want to slide off because my hair is just like wanting to push it off. My hair is really clean right now. I washed it. I took two showers yesterday. We'll get to that story. My hair's super clean. So it doesn't want to do anything. Hence why it's down. Yeah, I like the, the brim. I think I want to try a different style of brim. Maybe a double knit brim. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know. It's interesting. Bucket hats are not supposed to be wool. They're not supposed to be warm. They're supposed to be summer things, but you know, 
I was experimenting. I had yarn in my stash and it was bulky so I could use my big needles and I wanted to use my big needles. So I did. No DPNs. I did something like magic loop until I no longer needed to. And then just use the 16 inch circulars or however long they are. Did this in two days, three days, 29th to the 30th. No big deal. I like it. If You've made bucket hats and you know how they're supposed to fit. Would you tell me what I did wrong or if I did it wrong? Because, like, there's the bottom of my ears. There's the top of my ears. Like, is that where it's supposed to be? I wanted my ears covered because I'm wanting to wear this in the winter. But it's not going to stay covering my ears. So what's the point? I don't know. I've never made a bucket hat before. Anyway, I kind of like it. I want to experiment some more, but I need to get back to other projects. Like I need to finish the advent calendar. I've got two colorways left, just two, and I'll be done. I'm really excited. The color I just finished yesterday took me three days to do because my back was hurting when I started them. I tried, I did three board fulls, took a very long break. I had to take a break between each board, each blending board set. And then I waited, you know, by the time I finished the first three board fulls, I had to go pick up kids from school. And then I was able to finish the last three board fulls that day, or maybe I did it the next day. I don't remember. And I took a couple of days off because my back hurt so bad. I had a pulled muscle. And um, it was a three-point pull, so it was pulled from my neck down to my, my butt and around the front of my rib cage. So my, like, five or six ribs were crooked. My shoulder blade was crooked because there were ribs that were crooked. Let's just say my entire spine just kind of went, and all of my, almost all of my ribs were out. And it hurt to breathe and it hurt to move and I was having really bad headaches and I could barely walk and <laughs> like it was bad my boyfriend popped my back he massaged it he popped it he killed it it hurt really bad it was to the point where I couldn't even just lightly brush having a shirt against my ribs hurt okay that was how swollen I was and how bad my ribs hurt um, because the trigger point around the front is in between ribs and there were three or four of those trigger points different ribs so when you pull a muscle there are trigger points at the tip of the pull and when you have a three-way pull you have trigger points in the ribs at the top of the pull and at the bottom of the pull and this was my entire back it was bad well he had the same thing same side same knots same ribs out his shoulder was bugging him. <laughs> like, I don't know what we did. I think both of us pulled it rolling over at night trying to just cover something. It was like, I didn't do anything to hurt my back. He didn't do anything to hurt his back. And we both had a hurt back at the same time, in the same way, same amount of pain. I'm trying to massage him so he can get some relief while barely able to move. He's trying to massage me while he's in pain. My back refuses to pop. It was like, it was, it was three days of working hard and getting more and more painful because the muscles were getting more and more inflamed. But finally everything moved into place and the muscles relaxed. We got it worked out. My back's doing better. I was able to finish that particular advent. So I did six board fulls yesterday and it was great um if you didn't know if i didn't tell you already today is saturday november 12th yesterday i was able to finish that particular advent colorway Woohoo! now i have two left now granted i was supposed to ship this the beginning of october it is now the beginning of november and it's still not done everybody's been really patient they understand the mental health the stress the physical issues everybody's been so sweet and understanding so but i have another advent calendar that's custom 
it's a small one you know it's only for one person instead of for four people so I have to dye the fiber and I have to make real legs and I have to also dye up an order for my fiber subscribe subscription person which if you're interested that's being run over on Kofi um, you just sign up for the tier whether you want the small one that's bats carded or the big one that is four ounces comb top every month and I will just send you once a month a pretty fiber if that's something that interests you by January I should have a theme to carry us through the year or half the year or whatever but right now um, the one for November which was supposed to have already shipped is going to be Wizard of Oz themed. That's all I know so far. <laughs> so it's a mystery to me too. Whether it's going to be Dorothy and her red ruby slippers or if it's going to be just the ruby slippers or if it's going to be the Wicked Witch of the West or if it's going to be Glenda the Good Witch. I don't know yet. And of course there's the Emerald City and the Flying Monkeys and there's a lot. There's a lot of options. You know, lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! I love that movie. I grew up on it. So anyway, and this was the original Wizard of Oz movie. It's very, very old. So if you like the idea of a fiber subscription, you can sign up on Ko-fi for it. And if you like the idea, but you'd rather have a set theme and you have a theme in mind that you would like, just tell me and I will happily follow your theme. That would be a lot of fun. That would, that would solve a lot of my decision paralysis issues. So those are being run over on Kofi and also on Kofi are the sections of progress on the super secret Christmas project for members only. So if you're a member of Kofi, you get to watch those and you get to see the project slowly come together. When I'm done with the knitting, you will get the knitting vlog. Right now I'm working on the spinning vlog. You will get that when it comes out. At the end, around Christmas, I think Christmas day is when I'm supposed to release the full from beginning to end process condensed down into one video to all of you publicly here on the tube, the YouTubes, if I can get it done in time. But since I have only half of it finished and have to spin it, finish the yarn. <laughs> that is finish spinning. If you didn't know, the word spinish, not spinach, that's, that's a vegetable. But spin-ish means to finish spinning the yarn. So I'll roll into one word. And I have to knit. And I don't feel like spinning. I have no idea if I'll have it done. But anyway. So I've been slowly working on that. And now that my back is better. And now that I've been working on my mental health and getting that better. I feel like I can handle life again. I'm also finally going to get this tooth taken care of taken care of I've had a broken wisdom tooth for over 10 years it's to the point now where it has degraded to where it's constantly getting infected and I'm just I'm done I'm done having that destroy my physical health and my energy so I'm going to get it taken care of I have a free consultation with the dentist next week and I'm terrified but I have to quit procrastinating because this is killing my health. So I have to take care of it. Should have taken care of it 10 years ago. Going to the dentist, literally the thought of it sends me into a immediate panic attack. So I have been working on that and I know that I should have taken care of this a long time ago. And I know that if I don't, I'm just going to end up with worse horrible health issues. So it's I'm getting consultations so I can figure out a plan to get it taken care of. 
my insurance only covers Atlanta. One dentist in Atlanta. I'm not driving three hours. Okay. With traffic, three hours. Without traffic, two. I'm not driving that far to get a tooth taken care of when there are perfectly good dentists here in town. So the consultation is right up the road. We'll see what they say. We're on to plans for November. And if I forgot to mention something, I will just pop back in when I'm editing and film my little segment. Okay. So my goals for November, first of all, since it is the second, is to finish the advent calendar ASAP, figure out the, at the time I wrote these notes, I had, I thought I had three and a half colors left. I have two and a half. Now I just have two. So I'm feeling better. Um, now that my back is okay, I should be able to knock those out in just two days. So the goal is to have that done before Wednesday and figure out the shipping, packaging, all of that stuff so I can get what I need and get these shipped out. Then I need to finish spinning the Christmas project yarn and get to knitting. I'm hoping to get the yarn finished by the middle of the month so I can really get to work knitting. And then I've got to finish the Christmas socks this month so I can get them out of the way. And since I'm almost done, that's not going to take terribly long. Um, and then if my yarn arrives this month, I'll probably cast on a glove. So as far as the YouTube channel goes, I don't have a lot of plans for November content. <laughs> I don't have a lot of plans for November content because all of my plans have been disrupted due to the inability to film and edit. And that is the mental health stuff. It has gotten to the point where I've been stretched too thin. It has nothing to do with the business or you guys. That's family stuff. That's personal stresses. That's a tooth that keeps getting infected. It's, it's a lot of stuff. So the pulled muscle didn't help at all. That was really bad timing. Um, my car broke down again. I mean, it was just everything. So I am now doing better. I am more aware of what's going to spiral me into shutdown where my brain refuses to function. Um, Monday I took the laundry. I was supposed and did it. And I was supposed to also grocery shop and I went to the laundromat. I left the dryer balls and detergent at home. I had to come back and get it. Oh yeah. And the quarters, all of that was at home. So I had to come back and get it, get the laundry going, take my daughter to work, go back to the laundromat and just rest. And I called my boyfriend and I told him, I don't think I can grocery shop today. And he said, that's okay. You can do it tomorrow. We can't push it past tomorrow, but you can do it tomorrow. Because I had stuff to cook already at home. So I was like, I don't have to go today. So I'd rather go when I'm not going to be walking in circles, trying to figure out what I'm getting and still miss half of what's on my list. So put it off for a day. And then that was better. I was better the next day. By the time I was done grocery shopping, I couldn't keep track of anything. I had to have help getting home. <laughs> the boys had to tell me, um, that's a red light. Mom, the light's green now. You can go, you know, things like that because it's, I wasn't processing. As far as operating the vehicle and paying attention to traffic, I was doing great. But tracking traffic lights and stop signs, I was having trouble and I asked the boys to help me and they did. So yesterday I was cooking and I was on the phone and the boys were playing and Cooking and on the phone was fine. The boys playing in the background was fine. But when they started playing in the living room around where I was working, I was immediately couldn't handle it. So I got off the phone as quick as I could. And then I sat down and told the kids how I was doing. 
and why I kept telling them that they needed to play somewhere else. I even sent them outside for a while. I was like, you're not going to do that in the house. Um, and I was like, it's because I was already stretched thin with being carrying on a conversation with my mom and cooking fried chicken. Like, it was fine. I could handle that. But add in the boys making noise or talking to me or being in and out and distracting me and I couldn't deal. So I explained that to them, how my brain was functioning or failing to function, <laughs> struggling, I should say, and why I was asking them to be quiet and why I got off the phone so quickly when I realized they just weren't going to be quiet any longer. Because, you know, mom gets on the phone and all hell breaks loose and the kids think they're going to be noisy. I don't know why. If I'm not on the phone, they're quiet. As soon as I'm on the phone, they're loud. And they're 14 and 16. So that's normal for toddlers, you know, but teenagers, they never outgrew it. Let's put it that way. So anyway, I just got off the phone. I was like, you know, I've had my conversation. It was supposed to be brief. It turned into a long one. It's fine. Supper's almost done anyway. They were hungry. They were really hungry. That's why. They had the zoomies because they were hungry. So, um, but it was good to know I can multitask this much, but not this much, you know? So that was very, very helpful. And having them understand that I'm having these struggles, they were really, they have been really helpful. They've been very supportive and very helpful and very understanding and they've really tried they really tried to help me a lot and they have been helping um so yesterday i did the laundry and i was wondering how i would do because um one week i'll do laundry monday and friday and one week i'll do it wednesday so i alternate and yesterday was laundry day this week again and I took it by myself and went earlier and there was some people there that were really talkative and had very positive energy and we got to fellowshipping and having a great time and that helped me so much it took me twice as long to do my laundry because I forgot to check the washer it was, it was done for a while but we were talking and then the dryer was done for a while but I was talking it was wonderful. It was so wonderful. It was just what I needed. And that's probably why I'm sitting here talking to you now because I kind of got a energy reset, a mental energy reset. And it was desperately needed. It was so refreshing. And just having that human interaction with people that weren't down and depressed. I am an empath. I pick up on your energy. When I'm strong, I provide energy to other people. I change the energy in a room. When I'm not strong, I absorb energy. And yesterday I was in absorb energy mode and the energy was positive and it was uplifting and it was amazing. So if you're watching and you were one of those people that chatted it up with me at the laundromat yesterday Friday the 1st thank you so much you have no idea how much you helped me and I I appreciate you a lot <laughs> I appreciate you hanging out with me today very very much and I hope that your October has been fun not super stressful hope you enjoyed halloween if you celebrate and if you don't i hope you've enjoyed the fall weather or if you're on the other end of the world spring <laughs> and with all that i'm gonna let you go now enjoy the rest of your day week month whatever i will see you again when i see you again not pressuring myself right now it is recover and get back on track time for me. And I hope that you will join me on that recover and get back on track if you've gotten off track. I'm here for you and you're here for me and we support each other. I believe in you and I know you believe in me. So 
with that said, I'm going to go now and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.